Hello everybody, it's time again for another video about more things video games and movies get wrong about gas masks. And the reason I find this so funny is when I did my last video, it was just, you know, designed to be a bit nitpicky, just to make fun of a few things, stuff normally gets wrong. You know, I don't really care, I can still enjoy the games and films, even if they make technical errors. But it caused some people in the comments to get very, very upset. Uh, so I've been receiving death threats and stuff like that, you know, for just simply saying Call of Duty had plugs in the filters of a GP5 gas mask. Um, you know, so there's a technical error like that, and people respond by making death threats and insults and everything else. Because I guess some people's entire lives depends on the accuracy of gas masks in certain video games and movies. And if their favourite beloved franchise gets something wrong, then they need to kill that person. Or at least make threats to the extent of killing that person. You know, so it's almost like a cult or some sort of violent religious sect. So, uh, moving past that, I'll, I'm just going to say that if you're the sort of person that gets easily triggered by film mistakes and things like that, just walk away. Just walk away. Okay, so there's the Mad Max 2 reference done. Now, I've just realised, because this gas mask doesn't have um, an anti-fogging system in it, I can't read the text on my paper. So what I'm going to do is take the gas mask off for a moment after the dramatic entry, and then we'll read the paper with uh, actual being able to see. Okay, so let's start off. In The Last of Us, you can swim underwater, and you can wear a gas mask. Hmm, that's actually a bit of a problem. Because if you get water in the gas mask filter, it breaks it. And there's lots of other games and movies where people do this. Um, again, like I said, this list is nitpicking. I don't really care too much. I'm not saying The Last of Us is a bad game by any extent. But I am just making a list of things, you know, that stuff gets wrong about, you know, movies and games get wrong about gas masks. So in your filter, that's your filter, you've got your particulate layer in the front. And in the back, you've got your charcoal and vapor layer. And with both the particle layer, which is normally made out of either cotton or paper, if that gets gets wet, that's going to cause a problem. But more particularly, the charcoal layer. If that gets wet, the charcoal can literally run and, um, you know, like run out of the mask and stuff like that and stop working very quickly. So if you get your filter soggy on your gas mask, it's not going to last very long. But in lots of games, you know, you can put a gas mask on, dive underwater, jump into the water, get out, uh, you know, you're absolutely soaked with water, but the masks still function absolutely fine. So um, as I, you know, I just want to stress this enough in case it does trigger people unintentionally, this is all in good fun. Um, I'm not saying any of these games are bad, some of them are going to be brilliant games and movies, they just get things wrong uh, on a technical level. So, the uh, other thing is filters that either don't expire or expire too quickly, and I'm using Metro 2033 as an example for this, because in the last video people were telling me Metro 2033 is super accurate when it comes to gas masks. I will say it's more accurate than most games, and the thing is with the gas masks in Metro is the filters running out is a gameplay mechanic, I understand that. It's to add tension, you know, so you have to scramble around, find more filters, stockpile the filters. I have absolutely no problem with Metro, um, I want to make that clear, I like Metro to an extent. I'm going to replay it and see if I can actually enjoy it more. I might enjoy it, you know, more I play it through this next time I play it. Um, but, yeah. Uh, in real life, filters don't expire that quickly. Now, some people have said the in-game explanation in Metro, or the book of Metro 2033, is that the filters in Metro are recycled, so when they run out, people cut the filter open, put new charcoal in, and weld it shut. Okay, so that's a bit of an in-game explanation. It does, you know, get rid of some of the sort of doubts about it. But even very primitive charcoal filters tend to last quite a while. In World War One, they didn't really know what they were doing when they were making activated carbon filters. Uh, obviously, they were fairly big canisters, but, you know, they could still issue them to soldiers and they could survive multiple gas attacks of the original filters. So, filters, you know, in World War One, with the massive clouds of chlorine and everything and phosgene and whatever else, um, must have tended to last quite well. So, again, even if you did recycle filters, they wouldn't wear out that quickly. And especially if it's meant to be, like, radioactive dust in the air, um, the particle filters block those, and particle filters would have absolutely no problem working for literally hours in a dusty environment. But as said, you know, Metro, I'm not saying Metro is a bad game by any extent, I'm just saying when you say they've got this right, they actually kind of haven't, but there's an in-game explanation for it, and it's a gameplay mechanic, so like I said, this is not an argument against Metro, I'm just saying they have simply got that bit wrong. Um, another thing is wrong setup for SCBA, filter, rebreathers, etc. So this is a movie, uh, it, like for example in movies or games, where somebody's wearing something that's designed to work in one environment, but they're using the wrong kind of filter setup or rebreather setup, whatever. 
So that's pretty explanatory. But SCBA is self-contained breathing apparatus, like what a firefighter might use, etc. Uh, you know, of an oxygen tank or, you know, set up with a rebreather or whatever else. But the kind of point of it is that the self-contained breathing apparatus would give you air underwater in theory, or at least a scuba version would, self-contained underwater breathing apparatus. Um, or, you know, in like a zero oxygen environment, but quite often people are in those environments with filters on and they're somehow fine even if there's not oxygen. I think I covered that in the last video, but I do see that quite a lot where all things are classified as the same, where in reality if you use the wrong thing in the wrong place you're a dead person. So, um, you know, that's just something that's a minor nitpick that lots of films get wrong. But quite often, you know, somebody who get a gas mask on with a conventional filter like one of these can be in a zero oxygen environment and it somehow supplies them with air. Uh, these filters don't supply you with air, they just clean the air that goes through them of, um, like, nasty chemicals and things like that. Okay, another thing is expired filters on masks. So, basically, what a lot of games and films get wrong is that when you have a filter on a gas mask, this is a 1950s gas mask with a filter from someone in the 80s, so it's an expired filter. If I was to try and use this against chemical agents, it wouldn't protect me because the filter's expired. Um, so obviously, if you're actually in an army or somewhere where you'd be exposed to chemical agents, you'd have a brand new filter on your gas mask. And what a lot of films and games get wrong is they can have guys wearing really old gas masks with really old filters and it's somehow still meant to be protecting them. And that's just more knowing about the age of the equipment, really, than anything else. I said, in-universe, it's not a problem. It's just more of a problem if you think about it logically, saying, why is a mask from 1940 protecting somebody, you know, in a film filmed in 1990? Um, now, I'll bring up Metro 2033 again, because while I was saying earlier, you have to keep swapping your filters every few minutes. You see enemies wearing World War II British civilian duty masks. They don't look too dissimilar from this, but you can't replace the filter because the filter's, like, taped on there. Um, and those British civilian duty masks have, like, a permanently attached filter, although you could, in theory, unwind the tape, find a new one, tape it on. But regardless, Metro 2033, obviously set in 2033, the civilian duty masks are from the late 1930s, so you have masks that are nearly 100 years old with their original World War II filters on that somehow work. So it's a rule for the player and a rule for the NPCs, but just to point that out, that's there. Um... In the original Dawn of the Dead as well, when the SWAT team go in, they're wearing um, sort of US World War II naval masks, I think it is. Um, I think that's probably just to protect against tear gas, and it would sort of do that, but it's just an example of films where, you know, people are using completely the wrong equipment. And uh, there was an old British television series called Survivors, and in that, there were people who were like scavengers, and they wore World War II gas masks to go into the cities filled with all the dead bodies, so they couldn't smell the decom like decomposition and be sick. Um, they wore the gas mask to hide the smell. In theory, that's a really good idea, because a gas mask filter would block the vapours of a rotten corpse. The issue is they were wearing World War II masks filled with asbestos in the filters in the TV show filmed in the 70s. So, again, that's um, not really great for the actors or for the accuracy of the uh, programme. Another gripe I've got is when guys with gas masks and full chemical protective gear get infected with stuff. Uh, this is most common in horror films, obviously some logic's going out the window already with those, but um, you'll notice that a lot in zombie films, that you might have like a riot cop zombie, or like a game, uh, I played that zombie U game recently, but the zombie PC port of it, uh, and there's infected riot cops that attack you that are really hard to kill because they've got all the riot armour on and the helmets, but you think if they're fully armoured like that, how have they become infected? You know, it's just something to question, and again, like, there's lots of things in that with horror films where you've got guys in the full CBRN gear and gas masks who have somehow caught the zombie virus, but they haven't been bitten. Um, NBC or CBRN filters, chemical, biological, radiological, nuclear, the B bit, biological. Biological, uh, the biological part of the filter stops biological threats, so viruses and bacteria from getting you while you're wearing the mask. So if you have a filter on the full suit, you're not going to catch an airborne virus. But again, in some of these things people do. Even worse if they're actually in a film where, as like I said before, they're actually using a self-contained breathing apparatus. They've got fresh oxygen being pumped into the masks, yet they still somehow get infected. Obviously, if it was a thing like it was some sort of radioactive virus, I know that wouldn't ever exist, but that would actually kind of make sense because the radiation would penetrate, if it was like gamma radiation, would penetrate the mask and suit and still get you. So it makes sense if it was some sort of like psychic mind control zombie virus, but not... And again, we're now questioning the logic of zombie films of this list, but um, there you go. Um, 
Another thing is mask protecting from things they couldn't work against. Uh, so this go kind of goes back to earlier points, but the main one I thought of here is carbon monoxide. Now I have to notify people about this a lot in the comments, is that a gas mask won't protect you from carbon monoxide unless you have a very specialist filter on it that filters carbon monoxide and then they only work against low concentrations of the stuff. You actually need like a supplied air respirator basically to um, work with carbon monoxide or be in a carbon monoxide environment. Just like I was saying about um, masks being used in you know environments with zero oxygen, it's the same sort of thing. Uh, a regular filter will not provide you with air and will not filter absolutely everything known to man that can kill you. Um, so there's lots of films and games where you might have a regular gas mask that's designed to work against basic chemical, biological and radiological threats and it works against absolutely every sort of gas known to man. That's one of the things that I did like in Stalker Call of Pripyat, is when you have to go into those tunnels that are absolutely flooded with nerve gas and there's meant to be like very low oxygen or something, you need to get a self-contained breathing apparatus kind of rebreather set up to go through it. That's actually really clever because most games would just say, oh, you've got a gas mask with filter, that's fine. No, the game says, no, you need to get a good suit because you need an actual air supply coming in, not just using a filter. So well done for Stalker for getting that right. Okay, next point is gas mask layout doesn't make sense. No, ex no exhale valves, etc. Okay, so I'll talk you through this. With a gas mask, you have um, a few components. You have your filter, which cleans the air, and that's where the air comes in. So that's your intake valve. Once it goes into the mask, um, you obviously inhale the air, and when you breathe out, you have something called an exhale valve. There's an exhale valve and a voice diaphragm on the mask there. Now, the exhale valve is needed so when you breathe out, the air comes out the mask, and the mask doesn't inflate like a balloon and eventually pop all the air forces its way around the outside of your head, making a farting noise. Um, but regardless, the point is, in lots of films where they've made like prop gas masks or games where they make gas masks that look cool, Rainbow Six Siege is like the worst example of this possible, or maybe the best example, depending on how you look at it. For example, Sledge has a mask where he'd suffocate to death if he wore it. Um, you know, all sorts of things like that. Um, there's lots of films and games where people have gas masks where the layout doesn't make sense. Um, it's a bit like in Fallout 3, there's a combat shotgun, or the riot shotgun, whatever it's called. And the shotgun in that has the magazine further forward than the receiver and everything like that. And it's a layout that it can't actually work if you know how a gun works. Because there's no way it could pull the rounds into the chamber, you know, and everything like that, where the actual shotgun layout is. So that's like the same thing with gas masks. There's lots of films and things where, or games, where you've, they've mocked up a gas mask because it looks cool. No denying they look cool, but they wouldn't logically work if you think too hard about it. And again, like I said, this is a really nitpicky uh, list, so don't get really, you know, annoyed because I'm going, oh, that's really sad that you're putting out all these things. It's just an interesting thing to think about, isn't it? Um, you know, all the sort of things that wouldn't make sense. Like, I'm sure there's channels that talk non-stop about sci-fi stuff not making sense in science fiction films. So here's one about various other things. Okay, another thing is suits and gas masks being compromised in nerve gas clouds, you know, poison gas clouds, and the person's fine. And I, there's at least one example of this in that mission in Rainbow Six Siege, the actual single-player mission, but I think you can do it co-op with people. And the, uh, like, the last level in Call of Duty Black Ops, or a level really near the end of Call of Duty Black Ops, when you're on Ascension Island. And you've got the full NBC suits on and gas masks, but if people shoot you, you're absolutely fine, your health regens and everything else. Uh, in reality, as soon as a bullet goes into you, and there's nerve gas around, which is incredibly poisonous, as soon as your skin, and especially if there's a bullet hole in you, so your insides, are exposed to ner nerve agents, you'll be dead in seconds. Or you'll be dying within seconds, because if nerve agent touches your skin, it doesn't need to be inhaled. It's more deadly if it's inhaled or if it gets in your eye. If it simply touches your skin, you will die, unless you have antropine. Um, you know, something like that, but in lots of films and games there's really poisonous gas everywhere, you know, they, they stress how dangerous it is, and your guy is getting shot, and as well as his health magically healing from being shot, the uh, nerve agents don't get him even though the suit is compromised. So that's another one of those funny things that lots of games like to get wrong. Um, there's also person only wearing a gas mask when exposed to nerve gas, a sort of similar point I was just making, as I was saying, nerve agent is really deadly. The mask will protect your eyes and respiratory system, but your skin is still vulnerable. That's why you have to wear a full chemical suit, NBC, CBRN suit, when exposed to nerve agents. So, if you're exposed to nerve agents and you only have your mask on, you will die. 
but in lots of films there's meant to be really deadly gases like nerve gas or whatever and the guys just put on some gas masks and they're fine in reality they need to be wearing like a full rubberized suit all over them I've got videos on NBC suits if you're interested in what they look like they're not comfortable and they're bulky uh, but the point is that in reality you can't just simply wear a mask if there's some sort of gas um, I know lots of films make nerve gas look really magical, like The Rock, where it makes people's veins all stick out and stuff like that. In reality, you start spasming on the floor, um, you know, like frothing at the mouth, maybe. Uh, diarrhea coming out of you, urinating, losing control of your muscles. It's not a pretty thing, but it, you know, your skin doesn't fizzle off or something if nerve gas touches you or anything like that. But it is nasty stuff, and the point is, a mask alone is not enough to protect you. You need the full suit and a mask. Oh, and our last point is bulletproof gas masks. Now, I couldn't think of any examples of off the top of my head, but I know I've seen this in games and films before, where somebody's wearing a gas mask and it provides them ballistic protection to the face. Now, if this is some sort of futuristic sci-fi thing, or it's like some sort of power armor helmet, or like, you know, metal helmet with a filter system built into it, I can let that slide, but in a lot of things, you know, there are helmets where it's just like, this is a helmet and now you've got a gas mask as well, and it's just a rubber gas mask, you put that on, you get increased ballistic protection. Uh, a bullet would go straight through a gas mask. I have seen interesting videos where some, some of the lenses on some old gas masks are surprisingly tough. Um, I think I watched one of Tumbo 1984's videos before where he shot one with an air rifle and the actual first air rifle pellet from a 12 foot pound air gun couldn't go through the thing. Repeated shots did crack and break it, but the first one the pellet actually got stuck in the glass, which was really surprising. But Regardless, a mask like this is not going to stop bullets, but in some games and films people seem to have a glancing hit from a gas mask, or like, say in games, you get a gas mask and it's like, you know, plus five to damage resistance or something like that. No, it'll give you chemical resistance uh, and stuff like that, but not damage resistance. So there you go, that's my next list of these. Maybe this one will be just as controversial, I don't know. The last video got very popular and made lots of people very angry for some reason, and I said, why are you getting so angry over a video game or a movie to the point that you send death threats? I think you really need to rethink your life if, because I said some Call of Duty got something wrong, you think I should be hacked to death or something like that. It's, it's just ridiculous. But anyway, um, I hope you enjoyed this video and as I said, it's all in good taste. I like, you know, lots of these games that get these things wrong. It's just, they still get the things wrong regardless. But there you go. That's another list of more things that movies and games get wrong about gas masks.